All right, here we are today, guys. We're working on this 2005 Chevy Trailblazer. Today, we're dealing with the gauges. Um, as you can see, all of my gauges are zeroed out. You got the battery, the coolant, the fuel, the RPM speed, but the oil is way past any type of reading. So we're gonna get that situated today. Even when the vehicle is powered on or turned on, it still remains there. It might act sporadic here and there, but for the most part, it stays here. So we'll deal with that today. Alrighty guys, so what we're gonna start off with doing is getting our seven millimeter socket so that we can move remove our four bolts that are here in the lower knee bolster. So got one here, one below it, and two to the left. And once we remove these, we can start getting to the trim screws that are underneath it. Alrighty guys, let's bring you down here. Let's get you a little bit more light. This might help you see better. Alrighty guys, now that we had that removed, we can lower this bolster so that we can actually get to these three fill up hair screws that are on the lower of the trim. Okay guys, then that we have that removed, we can remove these two upper bolts right over the gauges that hold the upper part of the trim in as well. Okay guys, now that we have those removed, we can begin removing the trim. I'm using a panel tool. This works good. It has a little bit of an offset so I don't have to do too much prying. I have a little bit of an advantage. Um, you can use anything that you deem to fit. Just make sure you that you don't scratch up your surface. Plastic tools are the best for this. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna get this all the way worked around. There's another screw for the trim that's down at the bottom. Um, that I didn't get to yet, but we'll get to that here shortly. Um, you can also remove the screw that's located inside of the gear shifter. Mine is not there now. Um, it was removed before I even started to do this job. So it can actually turn. If you lift it up, it can turn so that you can pull the trim off. But let's get the rest of the trim off. We'll get that bottom screw that's right beside the power outlets so that we can get the trim pulled out so that we can move on to our next step. Alrighty guys, so we got that screw out finally. Now we can remove the rest of the trim and get behind so that we can now pull out the harness so that we can get this trim all the way out of here. So we have two harness here, we'll just disconnect it. One is for the four wheel drive, the other is for the rear windshield wiper. We'll also remove those power connector harness. Uh, we have two of them here.
all right guys then we have those out we can pull it over the steering wheel and we can get to the other two harness that we need to remove and i believe one is for the light i forget what the other one is for but just remove those two harness and you should be able to get to the dash now sorry the cluster you should be able to get to the cluster now now you can remove the four seven millimeter bolts that hold this cluster into place Okay guys, now that we have those removed, we can wiggle this thing out of here. Um, it has one harness that holds it in on the back. Just release the tabs from the harness on the back and you can pull it out and up. So pull it out from the bottom and over the steering wheel and it should come out. All right, that's it. Now let's work on getting this thing taken apart. Just a bunch of tabs that you need to release in order to get to the circuit board. You're going to release the tabs for the top and you're going to release the tabs for the front of it. Alrighty guys, so now that we have that situated, we have our circuit board out. We want to go and put some tape so that we can mark the location of the gauges that are not coming out. On this step, what I would do differently now that I have the knowledge of having to act, knowing how to actually do this, what I would do is just turn the gauges all the way to the left as far as they go, and then take dials for these gauges off. What that does is that gives you a point of reference other than having to mark it. So right now where I'm marking it, if I was to move it back, it will go back more. So there's a possibility of me putting these dials for these gauges back on incorrectly and that actually happens in this case but hopefully that bit of information will help you out so pretty much turn the gauges till they stop until they stop turn the gauges until they stop all the way to the left then you can pull it out but you will still want to keep a reference point which is still using a tape but you have a better reference point than having it floating as opposed to having it all the way to where it stops, if that makes any sense. I hope that information helps you out with it. Alrighty guys, so another thing to use is an offset trim tool. Right now I'm using a flat one, which is harder for this purpose. So I would say use an offset. It'll get the dials off of there better. Alrighty guys, so on to the circuit board now. So now let's get the stepper motor off. We'll identify where it's located on the front and then reference it to the back. As you can see, it's located there. So if we turn on the back, we're just gonna follow that little plastic piece that locks it in. And we're gonna do the four tabs that are around that plastic piece. Alrighty guys, so here, this is a little interesting here. So this is my first time and based on my research, I was totally scared to screw this up. So what I have is I have my sucker, my solder sucker. So once you heat the solder up, you um, push the button and it sucks the solder up. But per my research, I'm just so scared to mess with the board or get the board heated up too much or damage something. Um, I have this big soldering iron, which I have one that's more better for the process, but I didn't think it was heating up enough. So I'm using this big one, thinking that it will heat the solder up quicker and I'll be able to suck it up. But what it required was this one right here. This is the one that you should be using. Um, again, I keep changing between the two, trying to get it off. But what this one does, what this one needs to be successful is more time. So with the skinnier one, you need more time, more direct heat to heat the solder up to get it off. And you need to have your sucker right there as you're heating it up. And as soon as it liquefies, you push that button and you suck it up. Um, so here, I eventually get everything off and I can pull the stepper motor off. So let's work on getting it back on. And let me tell you some of the issues with getting it back on, you know, for a beginner. So let's just snap that back in and you have the tabs again. What I would do differently, 
you know, given my knowledge now, is I would bend the tabs just slightly because um, they're in the board bent just slightly as well. And again, I would have more confidence using this. I wouldn't use the big solder and iron. I would use a smaller solder and iron. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of getting the board kind of contaminated using this big one. Um, but the smaller one, again, just more direct heat. Just letting the solder liquefy and fall into its form. Right here, I'm just really patchy and touchy and, you know, just don't want to mess nothing up. Um, but yeah, if you just use a smaller solder iron and have more time on the solder so that it can liquefy and form into a shape, you'll be okay. You're not going to um, hurt anything. Just try to stay in a centralized location, heating up the pen mostly. Heating up the pen mostly and trying to melt the solder to the pen. You want to stay as clean as possible and not get any contamination across the board. All right, so I have that. It's really patchy. It's not that great. I'm going to throw it back in. And what I found out is that it's going to operate for a little bit until I hit some bumps and stuff like that, get a little bit more driving time. So probably about a week later, the issue for me came back just because the soldering job wasn't great, right? So I needed to have a better solder. Those were like weak connections. So eventually through the bumping and moving of the vehicle, those connections got loose and it created a short, whereas though the stepper motor before was broken, you know, it didn't have a weak connection or anything like that. It just had a broken stepper motor. So the fix would have been what was done here. But since I didn't weld it as great, what I created was a short condition. So just be more confident, use a small soldering iron and a soldering iron and get in there, make sure your solder is melted and that is neat. And if you need to clean the board up, you can use either 90% isopropyl alcohol or you can use 99.9%, .9%, which is better for the board, to clean up after you finish. Make sure you don't have any solder intruding or impeding upon the rest of the circuit board. Make sure it's as neat and concise as possible. But right now, I'm putting my dials back on. Again, I have a problem with the speedometer. I got all the rest of them right, but the speedometer was a little off. So again, prior to, I would just zero them way past. I'll go all the way to the left as far as they can so that it'll be easier to reference them putting them back on. All right, so we're just going to slap this cover back on here shortly. Let's get this tape off. Get the top cover back on and then we'll put the back cover back on. That's pretty self-explanatory. All right, again, we'll lay it in there and flip it up and we'll get our four bolts to secure it back in there. Don't forget to connect the cluster as well. But yeah, we'll get the four bolts in here. We've already connected it in the back, so it's connected to the harness already. All right, guys, now that we have that in, we can begin to put our trim back in. We'll get it situated again. You can see how my gear shifter is turned. That's because that screw is not in there. So it makes it a little bit easier to get it back in there. All right, so now we'll put our two harness back in on this side. And then we'll get our four harness on this side um, back in and then we'll begin to put the trim back into place.
All right, guys, so let's just snap our trim back into place. And then once we get that, we get our screws placed back in so that we can lock the trim in. Again, you have the two above the cluster. And then you have the three below. And then you have the one that's near the power source. All right, guys, so now we can snap our knee bolster back in. Okay, now we'll just put our four um, screw bolts back in, the seven millimeter head ones. You got the two at the top and two at the bottom. All right, guys, so we're going to put that screw in and lower in again. My um, screw is not in my gear shifter. So at this point, you could put your screw back in your gear shifter if you've removed it. All right, guys, and we're all good. And now the gauge operates as it should, which it will for a little bit. But as I explained, it will eventually... Uh, <laughs> succumb to the soldering as you can see my gauge is off about almost five miles on the speedometer as well so that was another thing i had to fix but i'll save you the pain on that and i'll go back in off camera i hope this helped you guys out significantly if it did please consider liking comment and subscribing Part of a pack that was destined for me.